everyone, my name is Brianna. I wanted to talk today about my incompetent cervix journey, experience. I have babies in the background, so don't mind them. I also muted their show. I might unmute it, <laughs> uh, but that's just forewarning. All right, so it all started one day when I was about, I was 21 weeks. I was 21 weeks when I was diagnosed. The night that I went into the hospital, I was having, I was having contractions. <gasps> that was not nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, his brother's face is like, <gasps> So the night that I went to the hospital, I just felt like a lot of like cramping in my back and um, it just, it wasn't going away and I started noticing that it was like coming in like, like 10 minute intervals. I didn't want to bother my husband because he had work the next day. Luckily it was his day off too. But um, he had work the next day and I was gonna try to just like, see if it went away but it wasn't going away and i was like something just is not is not right i really think that i need to that i'm in early labor and my husband he was like okay well let's go and we had like we mind you this is like mid-pregnancy no one's expecting to have to go to the hospital like it was like almost midnight my son had just fallen asleep. I don't know how old he was at the time. I think he was like 10, 11 months. The ride there was, it was crazy. First of all, I just got my son to go to sleep. And when I woke, when we had to wake him up to put him in his car seat, like he was, he just wanted to be right up under me. He did not want to go into his car seat. I had to put him there, but he was screaming pretty much the entire ride to the hospital. And then on top of that, once we got into the car, we didn't have any gas and we got pulled over <laughs> by a cop. It was a lady cop too. And I was like, I'm in early labor and we're trying to get to the hospital, which our hospital is like 30 minutes away. She made us wait for an ambulance. She was just making everything like more difficult on purpose. After like 30 minutes of waiting for the ambulance to come, we finally were able to leave. They admitted me into the hospital and that night they had given me, I forgot what they gave me. They uh, gave me a bunch of water to drink first of all and they told me not to hold my pee. They just um, monitored me that night. The nurse was like, she thought I was gonna be fine. Um, but the next day, like they came and monitored me again. They're like, oh, we're gonna send you up to get an ultrasound done and we're gonna have the hospital's doctor check you out. I went and I got the ultrasound done and I was like scared the entire time because the tech she wasn't really saying anything she was being really vague with me and she kept telling me like the doctor will explain everything to you she just wasn't really like engaged with me so when I did get to the doctor he basically like told me to sit down and he was like at this point your baby is He's basically, he basically told me I was in preterm labor and that I could have my baby at any point. And because I wasn't 24 weeks yet, if he did come early, I would lose my baby. That was really, really hard to hear because I had gone from the night before being told I was gonna be fine to being told you're gonna lose your baby like it's coming and your your cervix can't hold the baby in. Uh, at the hospital that I was in, he was saying that uh, they don't do anything 
because they don't have the equipment at that hospital. But they were going to transfer me to another hospital who specializes in preterm labor and birth. After I went back to my room and I was just hysterical, like I, I just didn't know what to think. It was, I wasn't expecting that kind of thing to happen to me because my first pregnancy went by like, it was super duper easy so I didn't know why it was happening um, and what could have caused it. When I got back to the room, they're like, it's gonna be okay. Um, we're going to send you over to another hospital that specializes in this kind of stuff and you'll get a surclage. And I think at that point my cervix was measuring like almost two centimeters, maybe like one point something. I really can't remember because it was like almost a year ago. They gave me a shot, I don't know what it was. They gave me something, like a shot um, that morning. I guess it kind of helped and they told me to like drink plenty of water and like don't hold in my pee. An hour or so later, while I was in the little, what was it, hospital bed, or what, was the, what are those things called that they, they strap you to when you're about to get onto the truck? They put me on the gurney, is that what it's called? They put me on that thing and um, they gave me another shot and then they put me on oxygen because it was really, really hot in the back of the ambulance. Like that was my first time being in the back of an ambulance and I never want to be in the back of an ambulance again. When I left the, that hospital, my cervix was like one point something, like 1.6 or something centimeters. I guess it was just, I was just feeling really, really like dehydrated inside of the back of the ambulance and I kept telling them like, I, I feel really dehydrated, like I'm really thirsty and they're like, well, we can't give you anything right now. Or it took an hour for me to get to the other hospital. After I got to the next hospital, they measured me again and I saw the doctor at, for that hospital and he said that my cervix... Look at you, look at you. You see you? <laughs> he said it was 0.66 millimeters. And I was just like so shocked, like how did my cervix it, like shrink down that much and he was like we're gonna try to do the cerclage for you we've done it before hopefully we don't pop your water or whatnot I was just nervous like I didn't know what the heck to expect and they're like uh, we're gonna put you under for uh, like 30 minutes it's a really quick procedure and so they had me scheduled for the next day and I was just super duper worried. Like in the meantime, they told me to like drink plenty of water and you guys, if they give you fluids, if they give you fluids, you still need to drink water. If you have a surclage, you need to drink as much water as you possibly can because those little bags of fluids, that's only like, only like not even like a cup. It's not a lot of water that they're giving you. Yeah, I got my surclage the next day the next morning. I'd never like been in like a surgery room before, but it was really uncomfortable. <laughs> it was a weird experience for me. They got me dressed in a gown. They made me put these compression socks on and they put me out. The crazy thing is like when you're being like put to sleep, you don't know that you're you don't know when it happened like I didn't know when I fell asleep I just know that I fell asleep <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even know I fell asleep to be honest like I guess you never really know like when you fall asleep like the moment it happens but yeah I woke up and I was like where am I I think I was down there for like an hour like I was out for 30 minutes like yeah. I was in the that surgery room for an hour basically like they put me down and did everything and I was out after surgery they brought me back to my room and they were just gonna watch me they didn't know when they were gonna send me home and basically I was gonna be hospitalized at that point because just because my cervix was it was just super duper short and 
they didn't think that the surplus was really gonna hold. They said it was in pretty good, but they, they just didn't think that he was gonna last that long inside of me. So I was 21 weeks and they said the goal was to make it to just like the next week. Um, I'm just taking it a day at a time. The rules they gave me were to drink, uh, drink as much water as I could to drink four of those. I think it was like a 32 ounce cup to drink four of those. And if I feel the urge to use the restroom, to use the restroom, don't hold it in because that causes contractions. They also said not to push. Uh, if you have to do your duty <laughs> and just not to do anything really just lay in bed like the next night I think they told me they were gonna start me on magnesium and uh, steroids for the baby so the magnesium treatment it is the worst thing like I've ever like experienced it was so weird it was painful it comes in a little one of those little fluid bags and they put it through your veins and it was really weird because it was making like as it was going in it was making like my entire like left side like just super duper hot like I felt like I was on fire like my throat felt like it was on fire my chest and it was just painful and like they said they were gonna do that um, for like three days and I told them no <laughs> <laughs> that um, I told them like that was that was too intense. It turns out I didn't need another magnesium treatment, um, but they gave me after they gave me that. I think they gave me stero steroid shots for the baby. I think it was a shot. Like I said, you guys, it was a, it was a long time ago. But after that. I basically, the only thing I did was they gave me uh, this progesterone, progesterone pill and they made me insert it into my lady area. They made me do that every night and they gave me a stool softener. And then in the morning they gave me a stool softener and a prenatal vitamin. But yeah, that entire experience was just super duper like lonely. Like my entire stay, I think I stayed in the hospital for like a month and a half. And I feel like so incredibly like, I feel so bad for people who have it like way worse than me who live in the hospital because it is really, really lonely. Um, and my husband, he couldn't come and visit me every day. I, My son, I only got to see him like maybe on the weekends if my husband wasn't too busy too busy so it was really really like tough going from seeing my baby like every day 24 hours a day to like not seeing him at all or maybe once a week and i'm sure he went through a lot too they checked my cervix the next week after i got the surplus they just pretty much kept me on the monitor and um after i got the treatments and everything they pretty much just kept me on the monitor for a while um, they checked me once and they said my I was still at like 0.66 millim millimeters he didn't want to check me too much so like he didn't check me again until maybe a month later yeah they just kept monitoring my contractions and the baby and they just at this point said it was a waiting game um, and they would say well We'll, we'll see if you can make it to 22 weeks. And once once I hit that, they're like, oh, well, we'll see if you can make it this far. Well, I kept making it. And they were just astonished. They're like, I don't really know what, how this is like happening. They, they were just really astonished. They're like, wow, we weren't expecting you to like really make it this far. And I think I was 28 weeks at this point and he was like are you ready to go home i think we're gonna go ahead and send you home you've been doing pretty consistent your contractions are they're not as bad we're just gonna send you home on strict bed rest and like he checked me and he's like 
wow, your cervix actually grew. Like it's at 1.6 centimeters. And I was like, really? They sent me home on really strict bed rest. I was just really, really happy to be able to see my baby. But every day I obviously couldn't like watch him. He had to continue to go to daycare. But I was just so happy to be able to see him at the end of the night every day. Because that hospital stay, you guys, it was so lonely. It was like being in solitary confinement. Like the nurses came in every once in a while to check on you, but and you'd make conversation because they're the only people you really have to talk to. But it was just it was really, really lonely. I just had to like distract myself and I had schoolwork to do and stuff like that. So I was pretty distracted for the most part, but when I had nothing to do, it was just it was really lonely and the food was not that great. <laughs> what I think caused my incompetent cervix was firstly the fact I wasn't drinking enough water. Like literally, I don't like before I got hospitalized, I think I was drinking maybe one cup of water and nothing else because I was, I don't know, I just get really distracted easily and um, I'll get, I'll have like a full thing of water next to me and like I might take a sip out of it but like I, I just forget about it. I tend to ignore my body uh, which is really really bad. So I think that that was like, that was what was happening. I wasn't like drinking enough water because I noticed while I was in the hospital and on the contraction monitor like if I started having contractions like it was because I hadn't drank uh, enough water it, when I did drink like a lot of water I had no contractions at all so I really think that keeping your body really super duper hydrated is really important because my body was saying like, I don't have enough like fluid to support you and, a, and another person basically. And it was trying to eject the baby who was sucking up all of my nutrients and everything. That's my main reason. Like I really think that it was just because I wasn't drinking enough water. Now that's just how I feel. And also, I don't know if like, the fact that my son and my blood type don't mix, if that was a reason too. Cause I have O blood type and he has A. I just, I'm just telling you how I think that my, why my body was doing what it was doing and what caused my incompetent cervix. Um, so if you're not drinking enough water, drink plenty of water. Follow the instructions that they give you. Don't strain when you use the restroom. Don't hold uh, anything. Um, rest try not to sit up too much make sure you're reclined so you take the pressure off of your off your cervix um, after i got home i continued to drink lots of water but i was really bad <laughs> about being on bed rest because we were in the middle of moving well i did let my husband do a lot of the work for moving like once we moved into our new house i did try to keep it I did try to do a little bit of housework like the closer I got to the end of my pregnancy. Um, but for most of the day, I stayed on the couch and I watched TV. <laughs> but yeah, after I got out of the hospital, it was pretty uneventful. I just stayed on bed rest and I drank water. And I think the week after I got out, they made me take the progesterone pills for a week and then they said I didn't have to take them anymore. That's pretty much it as far as like my hospitalization. Um, now if you want to see my labor and delivery video, I have, I've already posted um, that video and I'll link it below and that has some footage from like the night that he came. This is him, by the way. Another thing I think helped me was that Aside from my cervix being short, my baby was perfectly fine. Like he was growing perfectly fine. His stomach was a little bigger than usual, which is like a sign of diabetes, but he was fine. I had a lot of fluid too, so I don't I don't know if that might have helped. I don't know. But um I ended up making it to like 39 and a half weeks. 
So it can be done, you guys. Your cervix can grow uh, back. Not maybe not completely, but it can get longer. Um, as long as you take care of yourself and you drink plenty of fluid. That's right. You drink plenty of fluid and um, just rest. Just relax and with a little positive thinking, hopefully everything will be okay. And you have your little bundle of joy crying at midnight, waking you up every hour wanting to nurse or wanting your attention. Hopefully you'll experience the joy of this. That's all you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.